If we're going to grasp the full import of Christ's offering for us, we must notice the different kinds of offerings listed in the book of Leviticus. First, of the five main offerings, four are animal sacrifices of various types. But the grain offering, in chapter 2, is, of course, without blood. Then there are two categories, the burnt, chapter 1, grain, chapter 2, and peace offering, chapter 3, are sweet savers, voluntarily given at the bronze altar before the Lord. The word used for burning this class of offering is ola, to cause to ascend. In other words, the fire turned the offering into a sweet aroma that went up to God for his pleasure, where it could be translated an aroma of rest. With these, the offerer's hands were laid on the head of the animal, and the value or acceptability of the offering was symbolically transferred to the offerer. In striking contrast, the sin and trespass offerings were compulsory and not a sweet aroma to God. They were also killed at the bronze altar, but were then burned outside the camp in a clean place. The word for burning these offerings is saraf, meaning to utterly consume. These sacrifices, identified as bearing the sin or trespass of the offerer, rather than coming up before the Lord in pleasure, were put out of his sight by burning. In this case, when the hands were laid on the animal's head, instead of the value of the offering being accounted to the offerer, there was a symbolic transfer of the sin or trespass to the offering. Note both sides of the substitutionary transfer regarding Christ. Quote, he made him who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians 5.21 There would be both rich and poor among the children of Israel, and the Lord wanted everyone to be able to make offerings. So he laid out for them the kinds of creatures that could be sacrificed. If they were to picture Christ, they all must be ceremonially clean animals, and each, quote, must be perfect to be accepted, Leviticus 22, 21. The three categories were from the herd, the flocks, or the birds. May I suggest the young bull or ox pictures Christ's unwavering service. These beasts of burden were utilized for plowing, 1 Samuel 14, 14, for treading out corn, Deuteronomy 25, 4, and as draft animals, Numbers 7, verse 3. Only seldom were they killed for meat. Those from the flock emphasize his uncomplaining suffering. God's lamb went, quote, as a lamb to the slaughter and as a sheep before its shears is silent so he opened not his mouth. Isaiah 53, verse 7. The little birds, able to be caught by the poor, remind us of Christ's unquestioning submission. Genesis 8, 10, Job 38, 41, and Luke 12, 24. As he yielded to the dove-like spirit, but what humility. Can you imagine being compared to a dead goat or a beheaded bird? Yet God was willing to go this far if it would help us grasp the sacrifice of his son. The Hebrew word korban, translated 36 times in Leviticus as offering or oblation, means something brought near. That was the role of the offerer. Then that which had been brought near would begin to go up as a sweet aroma to the Lord. As noted, the Hebrew word for burnt sacrifice is ola, ascending. So individuals brought gifts, but who could make a bull or a lamb or a dove or even a sheaf of grain but the Lord? 
quote, we love him because he first loved us. First John 4, 19. And yet we do bring the offering to him, agreeing with him that his son is as wonderful as he thinks he is. Will we ever come to the end of it? Quote, of him and through him and to him are all things to whom be glory forever. Amen. Romans 11.36. 